another episode of the 72 Pan Connector Podcast. With us this week, we got a full house. We got Tom. What? Josh. Hey, I'm here. Adam. Bye. And myself. And real quick, I said weekly. I got to stop saying that. Monthly. This month's monthly edition of the 72 PC Formula Weekly Podcast. Well, no, this is the only one that we release. We do have weekly podcasts, but they're very secret. Yes. And if you would Super like to get secret. part of those, you need to subscribe with God tier. Yeah. Yeah. So if, <laughs> if you visit our Patreon, you donate at least $10,000 a month. We will give you full exclusive access to the weekly 72 pin connector podcast which has amazing content yeah it's not like Great this, at all. Yes, it's this, the is, best this is where we put our leftovers we really just like, this is really yeah we, we try the, the we try a first time. round you know we try some jokes we try to you know do make weird it up you know yeah and then yeah. we put the good stuff the high production value i think martin scorsese directs those he does is that right he does oh, uh, yeah. we've actually got john williams with the uh the soundtrack too which yeah. is right. pretty nice. Good right. guy. Good guy. And we uh, yeah. actually got in partnership yeah. with Pixar to do some fun animations on the screen for yeah. us. Yeah. Like yeah, for yeah, it's really, they're really good. nice. They're really pretty. nice. And we're talking some really high quality grade A shit here. So you should totally throw down the 10K a month to get a hold yeah. of that. Uh, and our special guest every week uh, is Danny DeVito. Yes, this is correct. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Danny cool DeVito. Cool guy. I saw, yeah. a, I saw a thing that said... Uh, they should keep that Roseanne reboot live and just replace her character with Danny DeVito, but never address it. <laughs> <laughs> I would That'd so awesome. watch that. I've had saw, no interest uh, in that show at all, but I would watch the fuck out of that. I saw a uh, YouTube video. YouTube videos like production, like or like uh, thumbnails are getting really good. People are getting really good at I don't know Photoshop, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and. <laughs> People in general are pretty good at that these days. Yeah, what do you mean? I've never seen is it like it's a career or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, something like that. Uh, so. But someone there was a really convincing uh, thumbnail slash title for a uh, movie called Joker with um, Willem Dafoe as the Joker, and right. I was like, "Oh man, that's awesome!" But that's obviously not the case. That's not, no one's doing oh. that. But. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd want that because I you know I don't want him to die. Because, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Know, well, Jack Nicholas. Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Sorry, Nicholas. Nicholas. <laughs> I'm talking to golfer now, but no, uh, Jack Nicholas <laughs> didn't. Nicholas. Nicholson. What are we Damn doing it. here? Damn Nicholas it. Cage. He didn't Jack die. Nicholas he Cage. just went crazy. No, yeah, Jack he Nicholas actually, is up. Uh, sought out therapy after that. Yeah. Um. But uh, neither so, did um. What's his name He's from uh, Suicide Squad? Uh, oh. No, 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 no. Oh, Jared Leto. Yeah. Uh, Jay, Jared Leto Jay, didn't, Jay didn't Leno. kill himself. Yeah. Jay Leno. Yeah, Jay yeah. Leno. Yeah, there was like Joker. next to cool. no Joker in that, too. Yeah. Very I mean, the, I really like the Harley Quinn in that. The moral of the story for Joker is don't be a character actor and play Joker. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. will fuck you oh my up. God. So or, Ledger, or just don't do a good job. You could do a bad job. Heath Ledger locked himself in his trailer for like a month with a stack of Joker eccentric Batman comics. And if I locked myself in a room with the killing joke for like a week, yeah, yeah you bet I go fucking nuts. You bet if you they do some cast blow with Daniel Day Lewis to do Joker, somebody would actually die as a result. <laughs> and, they, and they would let him do it too. They'd be like, well, yeah, he's you just have to getting get into, into the character. The character. Yeah, it, it's, it's just <laughs> what Hollywood has to do. Hey, come on, he, the guy he killed was an extra anyway, so it's not like his life really matters. Who would Ooh. who would be the weirdest Joker choice? Danny DeVito. DeVito. <laughs> I was going to say that. He's already <laughs> been the Penguin, Let's so you can't do that. that. Um, hmm. um, are we allowed to go a little different? And say something like uh, Sam Jack, like a super flamboyant guy like that, but not okay. in the joking way, but like in a I'm just going to be sarcastic and mean kind of way. I, I actually, I yeah. yeah. It would be a totally different spin. I can yeah. think of the worst Joker. What would be the worst Joker? Rick, Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis? I don't no, know who Rick Moranis is. He would be the is. fucking He's best the guy Joker. from, uh, he, he was in a bunch of, yeah, he, he was, was in a Lord bunch Helmet. of. Oh, I was going to say Keanu Reeves would be the worst. 
No, I don't. I think okay. Keanu Reeves is a good actor, though. So I think he'd 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 at least pull it off. Like I think I'd got, like to see that just to see him act that way. I think yeah, he nails roles different. with no emotion. Meryl Streep, yeah, I think Meryl Streep would be a fantastic. <laughs> I want to see Gilbert Gottfried <laughs> as the Joker. <laughs> I can't even we do a voice. We have to kill the Batman. <laughs> actually, we have to good. kill the Batman. <laughs> that voice actually would work, though. I mean, him no, physically, I couldn't see, uh, but I could see that voice for a joke. You're just saying yeah. words at this point. I don't think that's true. I don't think you think that's true. I think that could be cool. <laughs> I'd, I'd watch it. I really would. Yeah, I'd watch it. Watch it. I'd, okay, I'd watch I want to see like Chris Pratt as a Joker because he would be like the funniest Joker by far. He'd be the worst Joker. Mm. He would, I don't, he I don't see him doing it. I take part. it back. I think Chris Pratt would absolutely be the worst Joker. I take back my submission for that. I think. Chris Pratt, 100%, would be the worst Joker. I love Chris Pratt to death, but there's no way he can pull off a serious role. I think that would but be that, Nothing that's on it. that level. That's, that's like next I, level. I thought that about, uh, what's his name, who played Jim from The Office, and then he did A Quiet Place, and holy shit, not only is that I guy that jacked. Good. Yeah, that, I think Stephen Fry would be a really bad Joker. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. actually, my, my whole view on The Office got spun. So, um, what was her name? Pam, in The Office. You know, yeah. they're painted mm-hmm. as a great romantic thing. She cheated on her husband twice with a coworker. <laughs> she was allowed to pursue her dreams, but when her husband wanted to pursue her dream, she said no, family first. And just there's all these different things when you start to look at it like she was a really mean person. Like she was Which a one? terrible person. Pam, the main girl in the office. Oh. Like mm. because she's colored yeah. as the main character, you see these things as okay, but I mean she was a bad person. Yeah, I, can I can't disagree. I That's can't disagree point. with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Although although I love the my favorite thing to come out of the office is the gym stare where you look with a goofy expression directly at the camera, like <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite thing to come out of the office was Parks and Rec. Yeah. I, I have <laughs> I just started that. I'm like two episodes into season two, and I just okay. I don't like it. It's an office ripoff, and it's not nearly as good. That season two no, is when it starts that, to come into its own. Get yeah, it starts to get it starts to get okay. Like, season literally, two. Literally, Leslie Nope is, is, is just is just a female Michael Scott. She's she's the worst character, I think, in that yeah. show. And the whole she's show really. focuses around her. It's it's not good. Like there are some moments which are funny. Like everything Chris Pratt does in that show is kind of entertaining. That's why I'm saying just wait. It it, be, it changes just keep going. a little You're bit. Fine. I just want yeah. Ron Swanson and Chris Pratt's character <laughs> like Andy Dwyer. I want that as the whole show. That's the only thing I want out of. And what uh, what, um, what about uh, what, what's his um, name? Um, what's the girl's name? <clears throat> Oh yeah, the one that Chris Pratt eventually dates, right? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Spoilers. Uh, damn it! What's his name? <laughs> Everyone knows that. Aziz Ansari is yes. amazing in him, that. Him, him. Yeah, the master Aziz, of Aziz none. Is yeah, so he's good. good. He's good. And of course, Jerry. <clears throat> I think I think Tom's he's slowly realizing he actually likes the show. He's like, yeah, well, I, that part's good. That, that yeah, person, that, that person, too. that person. No, pretty like, much just not they've, Leslie. They've Nope. got they've got the talent. I like Leslie later on. Absolutely got the talent. I just think their their writing staff said, okay, it's going to be the Office, but a government version they did to start that that's exactly how they started I, yeah and that, that's why that the first sucks. season was bad and the second season was getting better just i didn't like it too trust me i didn't like All it too right. when i started it i'll, I'll just keep get through it. it i'll keep with yeah, it yeah I, I will say review this. after after completion if you right. don't like Which it after the completion of, <laughs> after today. season three if you do not like it bail okay all right now i will say this uh i been binge watched all of it's sunny in Philadelphia, or it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Um, and I've got to say, it's a five-star show for a five-star man all the way. I did that before I moved out they, to Seattle. Love they took it. that off of Netflix, right? What's it on now? Is it it's Hulu? on Hulu now. Okay. Yeah, so, so I, I need to watch a bunch of those of before my free trial of Hulu runs out. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch them all <laughs> yeah. because it's it's so good. And not not even for the show, but the recipes you get out of it. Like, like Babish did rum ham, <laughs> riot juice, and fight milk. Fight milk. And milk steak. Oh, and oh, milk steak. He also did grilled Charlie's, which I still want to try. Those he said actually weren't terrible, yeah. but it was incredibly difficult. When you do a grilled cheese with the cheese on yeah. the outside, it's not going to be easy to clean up. Cheese outside, no. peanut butter inside, chocolate outside, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Actually, that's what I mean. If you take, if you if you use like a good cheddar cheese and not like a craft single or whatever, you can make a grilled cheese with cheese on the outside, and it gets crispy like a crust. You know, like yeah. how when you order hmm. pizza and there's that cheese that gets like laid over the crust. I'd want to toast the bread first, I think. 
Like if you I, made oh you if you like if you buttered the bread, got it uh you know toasted a little bit and then cheese yeah, on the outside. That's what you do. Oh really? Okay, okay cool. You, uh, you, start, you start normal. You start normal buttered bread, you know cheese in the middle obviously, another slice on top, and then you brown that side and then you flip it and you brown that a little bit and then you put the cheese on the other side, flip it again, melt that cheese, hmm. and you know. And I then add chocolate, that crust. And peanut butter. I, I will <laughs> yeah. say this about It's Always Jelly Sunny. Uh, Renee and I went through this. Like, we binged the whole thing, but we did it mostly while we were eating dinner. Don't do that. Don't be us, because <laughs> I don't think, I literally think there are less than five episodes in that entire show's history that don't have somebody vomiting. See, that stuff doesn't bother <laughs> me when I eat. But to me, if anxiety, st- like, if you get anxiety from watching things and that mm. bothers you, the show stay is bad the for you. fuck away. Yeah, this will be absolutely. There's a lot bad of yelling. For you. From the, the little whole bit show I've seen, there's yelling. a lot of yelling. It's all <laughs> about getting to the yelling. most uncomfortable situations possible and then just being a total dick the entire way through it. The the lead like, I didn't weapon, cring- I didn't cringe as hard through that show. Like I get cringy. I'm a very cringy person. If I see something or someone does something really awkward, like they <sighs> they come in and they and they so you uh, ask a girl out or something like that, and it's really, really like uh, you know, you two, took the blankets over your head. Two you things fake- in regards to that. But like, like you pro- oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, Adam. Um, did you watch Arrested Development? Because every single scene with Michael Sarah is <laughs> yeah, <bad>. yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, also never watch the show Louis. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, Louis, Louis is the show. same thing. Louis is the same thing. But no, yeah. whenever you're f- faking your mom having cancer so you can get money so that she can help fix her um, uh, vandalism she did on a church statue and you're forcing her to fake scabs with a professional makeup artist and do a speech. I mean, this entire thing just made me like uncomfortable, but it was (laughs) awesome. So uh, I also saw the fifth season of Arrested Development. I binged that. It was uh, actually a pretty Hmm. quick season. Netflix just said, uh, oh yeah, by the way, we're remixing season four of Arrested Development. So it's a a little better cut. Uh, It was easier to watch. I think a lot of the humor uh, with all the disparate paths coming through at the same time was definitely lost in the recut. Um, It's not bad. I just don't think it was as good but it is easier to get into uh the fifth season it it was okay it was it was a thing i didn't hate my time watching it it got some laughs but season one and two is is really where it's at or one two and three i should say it's hard to come back to a show yeah like you you lose the synergy yep when michael Sarah doesn't look like a prepubescent boy anymore he still does but when he's not (laughs) a prepubescent boy anymore it just loses its Feel. Yeah, it so it wasn't bad. I, I will say that the gold standard of TV for me is still Arrested Development seasons one through three, by far. Yeah, I don't watch much. That's TV. a good. Yeah, Speaking of, good uh, Babish did uh, Arrested Development foods. So he did hot ham water, which was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very he put watery. ham in a water. Yeah, very watery with a a smack of ham. Smack a smack of ham. That's what it was. Uh, so good. But yeah, actually, yeah. speaking of food, I bought a grill. Yeah. 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 So uh, you, you we, got to dead. enjoy this grill. So we uh, made some wings with uh, my homemade oh. sauce <clears throat> on the grill. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh yeah. Nice. So uh, you uh, start um, sauce on grill while you're grilling. Resauce. After you're done grilled, you had a separate thing of sauce that was never contaminated, and you throw the done wings in toss. the sauce and toss that shit mm. around mm. while your yep. tater tots are finishing in the oven. Get loused in the sauce. And then you put some paprika over the top. Oh, no, 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 no. What? What was that? <laughs> one, <laughs> one, one more time. <laughs> okay, we're going to need to isolate that and make that a thing. But um, yeah, it's right. that sauce. Molasses, brown sugar. That combination is just diabetic heaven. Nice. That's it? Just molasses and brown sugar? No, 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 no. But those <laughs> two are, that's what that's brings the home thing. the flavor. That's you got it. Your Ketchup, your applesauce Molasses, vinegar. Molasses, brown sugar, maple syrup. Applesauce vinegar. Applesauce vinegar. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be awful. Applesauce that's actually like just spiked with white vinegar. Ugh. I can't think of anything worse than that. Um, so, sauce, by the way, I, can, I, got, uh, I got some applesauce and some smoked cinnamon, and I thought, oh, this will be good. It's going to have like an apple pie vibe to it. Uh, it does not. Don't do that. Uh, regular cinnamon <laughs> is far better in applesauce. The smoked added, like, uh, you, I think Irk got it right. It added, like, a savory flavor to my applesauce, and just, it didn't mm. didn't work. 
didn't work. Don't do it. Because, yeah, whenever I eat applesauce, I don't think I want to bite out of a steak. And to me, anything smoked yeah. gives me that, like, I want to bite out of some meat yeah, right it was, now. It was like a, a, you know, barbecue house sort of vibe to it. I mean, maybe if you had it with, like, as a side to some ribs, it would be okay. But just alone, when you're looking for something like a cinnamon applesauce sweetness, uh, yeah, it's smoked. Doesn't work. Don't do it. No, sir. No, sir, Bob. Yeah, Bob. But has been a Bob. month. It's been a long month. Yeah, it's been a long month. Yes. Y'all get into any games? Been exceptionally long. I got okay at Rocket League. Really? Yeah, actually, nice. I'm, I'm a little better than hot garbage. I'm right now just room temperature garbage. Yeah, it's awesome. Pretty, pretty happy. He's been doing that. really good. Yeah, Although heard, you have been like that, you've been doing really well. Yeah, you have I'm, been playing with exclusively like higher ranked players. Yeah. The last few yeah. times that I've caught you playing, you've been playing with nothing but champ two to champ three <laughs> as yeah. as 70 hours in <laughs> that's the so, best way to get I'm, good I'm, though. I'm getting yeah, there. trial by fire for sure <laughs> so all you have to do is have friends who are just fucking great at rocket league uh and then you can be good at rocket league too not always and I, if i'm still hot trash it's okay we should we should play together actually because i'm i'm better than i was i don't think i'd drag us down nearly as much i'd still drag <laughs> us down just not as bad as before but speaking of rocket league you guys been uh playing much since the new update hit oh it's so yeah, good i've been playing a lot so, mm -hmm. uh, it's so I went, good i went kind of had kind of a break from rocket league where i was only playing you know once one short session a weekend or something yeah i think i was able to update, get you to play, play a lot and yeah, <laughs> so I got my uh, placement matches done in a couple playlists and had a lovely solo standard experience today. Uh oh, you know, yeah, you know the drill. New right. season. Yes. You uh, miss a shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. Great play. Fuck off. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, but I did. I played probably thirteen or fourteen games of solo standard, and only one guy was noticeably mad. Nice. Everything else was great. That ain't bad. So, that was Man, surprising. One thing that gets me the worst is, yeah, okay, give me the nice shot. What a save, whatever. Trying to forfeit when a team scores in the first 30 seconds. And just yes, one score. God yeah. damn it. It's like, get the fuck out of here, man. It's like, well, well no, this that... guy's not going to try the rest of the game. I like, yep. I, my personal favorite toxicity is uh, take the shot. I think that's my favorite. Especially yeah, when it's like yeah. only possibly you to take the shot. And he's spamming <laughs> it because you're not going fast enough. Or something like that. <laughs> you oh didn't just God, so immediately funny. slam into the ball with all of your might just every moment that you have a chance to. Uh, what, do you mean you, what do you mean you can't throw a banger from cross court when there's no one in front of you? <laughs> take the <laughs> shot. I, I love take it. Uh, take it. I love birds uh, retort to that or, or retort to people watching the replay after you fuck up. Like just intentionally not skipping. It, it's wow. Thanks. I got it. <laughs> oh that's nice nice. Like that. yeah, nice that's really good see sometimes <laughs> though i do like to watch a replay to see like how close was that because on my screen i thought i got it yeah i'll do that a lot yeah yeah on the really close ones. i'll watch stupid stuff like i i fully admit in ones i will watch the slow rolling goal that goes in at like two miles per hour just to do it this is uh this is a good a good topic that local actually brings up and I think it's worth addressing. I talked at length with Tom about this, but um, people's growing concerns about the lack of meaty content into the game. Like, they put out crates, random cosmetics, uh, no one really cares. The servers are still bad. The, you know, the tournament mode is just kind of left for dead. The other modes are just tossed in there and no one plays them for all intents and purposes, you know, um, ranked is kind of eh at the higher levels. Like it's just, you climb up, you just get beat down. Um, there's a lot, a lot there. A lot of people are quitting right now. So it's, it's something worth talking about. What are you guys' thoughts on all of this? Because this is all happening. People are quitting the game. I don't uh, know. Numbers are down, you know, 
they're addressing it and they've already put it in the roadmap. Some of the stuff I think will help. Like they're removing the experience cap. You might think that's nothing, mm-hmm. but it's the casino effect. It's that, yeah. hey, I just hit this level. I just got to drop because I just hit this level. There's not going to be the exponential XP gain anymore from level 75 to 76 will be the same as one to two. So you're going to get items on a regular basis based off of yeah. levels and you'll get that success. Overwatch success. does that. Overwatch mm-hmm. has gotten me to play three games that I wouldn't have played otherwise because I wanted the loot box. I, I said, eh, yeah. I could yeah, stop but now, is but that, I'm, I'm so I mean, close. I, is, it, is that really the answer when like, is manipulation really the answer? I, it, like, when it, this when it this is something to, we're talking about. It's, it's something to play for. When it comes to increasing that's, that's player time, if you throw ethics out the window and it comes to are we pumping our player ba- or are we pumping our average playtime numbers? Yes, absolutely. Turning it into a casino is the way to go. And to me, it's not a players. bad thing because you're not necessarily asking for money from them for the casino. You're, you're just, just going to play. play more. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I, what was I your thought, Adam? Say, you're, you're trying to get into something. There, there's a couple of things. One of the things that. Uh, the developers have already addressed is that any long-term multiplayer game goes through periods of time where mm-hmm. people start start jumping ship, and then you know it, it's it's not like it's going to keep declining the whole time necessarily. I mean, Team Fortress Two had its ups and downs as far as player counts, and CS:GO did, and I'm sure Overwatch has too. Dota Two has, yeah, yeah, Dota Two yeah. definitely has, but. I mean, they could start introducing things. The thing is, is they tried non-standard maps before. Yep. Mm-hmm. Everybody bitched about it to take them out. It should just be standard arenas, whatever. So they do that. And now people are saying, oh, well, the gameplay is getting stale. And I, to a I degree, think- it's a physics-based sports game. There's only, I mean, you can't change. There's only certain things you can change without breaking the game and what makes the game special. Exactly. And so- the way I look at it, really, if you're not the top rank in the game, there's always something to be playing for. Right. So, yes. I agree. And if you're at the top rank in the game, uh, maybe it's just fun to you're shit getting on bored people. of it or, you know, play competitively, play tournaments and stuff. I, and if, I you're, so, so if I, that's boring too, then maybe you just don't like the game anymore. And that's fine. So, yeah, that's true. Well, so here's, here's my two cents on it as far as that's concerned. Um, Going back to just people leaving in general, most of the uh, posts about um, most of the posts that people are saying that are leaving, they're not leaving because of the game, not exclusively. Most people are leaving because of school. Time period's a big thing. Pay attention to right now, kids are getting out of high school and they're moving into college. A lot of those people are now focusing on school. A lot of people are moving into a job environment. This is like this time right now is a big transitionary period for a lot of kids. And that's what this this game has been ran by kids. It's been everything's been kids so far. Right. Like all the pros, everybody. And it's a super young game. So tournaments aren't even out. So there's no way to really justify spending extra time. uh, So a lot of the tournaments, uh, tournament organizers have shut down recently. So there's not really big prize pools. Um, there's big ur tournaments, but you know the skill gap is so gigantic right now that you don't. There's not enough tournaments for the bubble team or mid tier uh, teams to even even be able to compete to win those and justify their time. I, so, I would like yeah. to see Psionics throw money at or, or like uh, not a ton of money, but initial seed money. Uh, at certain esports organizations who are willing to put on tournaments. Like when Valve did the majors and they said, hey, we're going to give you a small pile of money to throw towards your uh, prize pool to gain interest. Um, You know, go put on a tournament. And in some cases, it worked really fucking well. Every tournament PGL put on was fucking fantastic. In other cases, it went to fucking shit. Like the major in Shanghai. It was one of the worst and people literally lost their jobs over it. Um, I think if Cyanux were to take a chance and dole out, you know, 50k and say, hey, here's some initial seed money for your for your pot. Uh, go go build us a tournament. Get people. So they did. They did do that. And a lot of uh, and there's a lot of tournaments, a lot of bigger tournaments that exist because of that. Like Cyanux isn't nearly as big as some of those uh, people like 
at that stage of like CS:GO and uh, Overwatch and all of the, there's some money yeah. in that in that game at this point. And that actual developer has quite a bit. Psyonix, this is their first their first big guy, right? That's just theirs, and they're trying to do it all their all on their own. Um, so like you can't really expect that. And the, and the tournament organizers are all new, you know, like they're they're all brand new to this. No one's casted Rocket League before. People have casted shooter games before. So like there's a whole bunch of growing that's happening right now. I think this little dip in. Uh, in tournaments dip in like in player base is super temporary i think that the biggest solutions that they're kind of striving for and they're putting in place are already going really well and i think that like we're going to see a big shift in in how everything looks like the tournaments mode is really really cool and they already are they already have plans to give rewards for weekly tournaments, weekly events. So a lot of that stuff is going to step up even more. So I know for sure, I'm, I'm very, very confident that the tournament portion of it will probably be housed within Psyonix's little environment that they created. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and it'll really step up what's, what's possible for so- them in this season. So oh, I th- local, thank you, man. That's really cool. So I think that we get stuck in a situation where we think esports always drives player base. And I yeah, and think does. that's a dangerous assumption because you can look at a lot of games that have good player bases, have jack shit for esports. Rainbow Six. Uh, they're Pumpkin. growing, but yeah, uh, Rainbow no, Six. They've got a lot of esports stuff going but on. But I mean, in general, though, like a lot of your player base doesn't watch it. Like Halo. Yeah, some people watch a Halo circuit, most Halo players don't. Yeah. Madden. Yeah, but like, no one watches Madden Bull, but Madden gets a lot of players. It's the idea. A lot of people watch Madden. It's not. A, it's it's super. It's not a popular one. It's not like the creme de la creme, and there's not hundreds of thousands of people watching it. But people watch it, and it's a thing, and it well, has its own I, community. I, I get it has it, but that is not the player base. Though the player base versus who, that plays it versus who watches it, who watches it is such a small subset. Well, I don't know a single Madden player who watches the Madden Bull. And I know a lot of Madden players. There's there's yeah. also the issue where, uh, and this has actually become kind of a, a hot point last year and this year in esports and amongst game developers, which is uh, catering to different uh, fan bases. So you've got your... Dota 2 player fan base, right? They're rabid about the game. They pay attention to to patch notes. They will buy all your cosmetics. They fucking love playing Dota 2. Uh, And then something that happened after TI3 and especially after Free to Play came out, uh, which is you now start to cultivate this fan base of people who don't like playing Dota 2. They're not good at it. They don't like it. they uh, They don't understand the playing mechanics of Dota 2. They understand what happens in the game, they just can't pull it off themselves, but they fucking love watching it. They love the drama, they love the players, the backstories, they think watching Dota 2 is the hottest shit ever, and now, you need to cater towards those people as well, and sometimes, the two player bases have conflicting goals, right? Making a game that's super easy to watch, where you're not affecting or pulling away developer resources from the actual playing of the game, that it's a hard thing to do unless you're a massive company. Uh, Overwatch is running into the exact same problem right now, which is they built the game to be really good to play, but now they want an eSport on top of it, and the viewer experience isn't great right now. It's getting better, but it's nowhere Mm -hmm. near where League of Legends or Dota 2 is. Right. I think this, I think for, for Rocket League, it's, it, it's not necessarily that as much as it is casuals, like casual players versus competitive players. Those are your, that's your big, your big equilibrium, your big balance that they're struggling with. You have players that can't do ceiling shot, flip reset, you know, double touch goals. And then you have people, you know, and then you have people that do like in their sleep, you know? So the, the biggest issue is is appeasing both of them like you have pros going on stream like just today i watched a pro freak out about the soft reset he got his uh, yeah. he got all of his uh his uh how was it called placement matches and he placed one division below where he was technically mm-hmm. right so and it, you got to feel for it right you think about it like what's the point what is the point of having a a reset why would you even reset anything at all when 
you just end up one division, not even a rank, like a division lower. And everyone's placing higher. So what's the point of even having a soft reset if everyone's placing higher than they normally do anyway? Well, the so there's a lot we're the talking about there. That's the uncertainty principle that gets put into the placement. So you place an uncertainty principle to account for the fact that during the last mm-hmm. season, a player has gotten better than what the rank is. I and think that's it's also, why people uh, actually It's jump. also a matter of just keeping the system itself stable. Because if you never reset, you run into what happened in season three where that it was went on for too bad. long and, and all of the ranks uh, inflated really high. So people were right. the, ranked uh, much higher than they should be because there's just been so much time and all, all the MMR numbers have been inflated. Yeah, the, and, um, and I think the one that was a big, that was a really brutal when they did a full hard reset and they put everyone yeah. back down to zero. That, that was, was a bloodbath. Now, now that that's was stupid. horrible. You, yeah, you shouldn't yeah. do that. <laughs> Keep in mind that the, the issues that we're seeing with long-term lengthy competitive games these are really recent problems right this problem Mm -hmm. started with league of legends it started with a game that was built as you will you'll play this for you know 5 10 15 years you will get better you will rank up and you now have a consistent profile that follows you around from game to game back in the day when we played you know csgo or not csgo when we played uh you know uh old school counter-strike we just got onto some random dude's server that he ran in his basement and he had surf yeah. maps on it. And that, that was the yeah. thing, right? When we when we played Halo, right? Yeah, we had Xbox Live profiles, but it's not like we had uh, ranked matchmaking profiles following us around. You'd have Xbox to know Live. who was good, yeah, right? You, you run, in, yeah. you run yeah, you into did. the people, you're like, that guy's good, that It guy's never affected good. me in any way. I played ranked since two. Yeah, it never affected me in any way. But in, in Dota 2, when I queue up for a ranked match and a non-ranked match, the same systems are at play. The same MMR systems are in play. Uh, my point being that these problems are not only hard to solve, it's that we don't have any great use cases on how to handle them. So everyone's trying to do their own things and trying to find out you know, their own ways to balance and uh, compete with a shifting and moving player base. You've got yeah, and this is the, this is the, players coming the, in. The, well, the biggest thing that you're seeing, too, is that especially for Rocket League, and I, I'd like to probably keep it a little bit, uh, probably s- stop getting into Rocket League too much because I could talk for hours on this whole concept. But um, the biggest thing is that you have a gigantic skill gap between every single step of the way to getting into any rank. Like, There's always a big skill wall that you have to get through. And some people never get past that skill wall. But then, you know, it, it creates frustration for the players at that skill wall that could be breaching into, like, a higher rank. Um, for instance, like, any, so anybody in, like, in the grand champion rank, like, trying to just play in general at the highest level, they don't get those opportunities. Sometimes they're playing with lower ranks, so they're trying to get into that higher rank to play with those people to get better to improve. So it, it's, there's a whole bunch of, like... There's really a lot to talk about on that, and I don't really want to dive Josh, into let it. Me, let me ask you one, one question. I think we can, we can leave it after this. Um, <laughs> would it be better if Rocket League and other games, for that matter, got rid of their tiering systems and then went to an ELO or an MMR model where your matchmaking rank isn't gold 2 or plat 3? It's 1,500. It's... 2500 yes. well it is that's the thing it is and why don't the they thing expose is, it like that right because they, i mean the, they could the and between, you can you can the, get it in it, it in feels that. it feels big the difference between gold and plat when really it could it's be artificial a, it could be 100 points but but it doesn't feel that way and if you lose 15 points on a match and you rank down to gold from plat it fucking hurts Right. But right. In, in Dota 2, mm-hmm. when I when I lose 15 points, my rank goes down 15 points. That's it. And it, it yeah. doesn't hurt. So you're saying the system could stay the same. You're just proposing maybe remove the show it in the a rank way. tiers most, and just most game development straight numbers. Yeah. Most most game development. It's not necessarily what your mechanics are doing. It's how you're exposing mm-hmm. them to the player. The reason it's the same when thing. You go like up, in the end, it's the same thing. Like. Like when you say like, oh, he's just a fourteen hundred MMR player. He's not going to be able to Dota. be as good. It happens in Dota. It's n- but there's a psychological effect. That's the thing. Yeah. When you go up from gold to plat, there is going to be such an emotional high that it outtrumps going down, and it'll actually keep you addicted to keep playing. I don't buy that. 
Because I, I think the going the other way hurts more. They have know, it I, actually coming like a slot. There is science behind this. I I'd like to see. Yeah, and and we could. If Psyonix released all of their data today, we could easily do this analysis on if people rank down, do they take a break from Rocket League? I know when I have, you know, I absolutely walked away from the game for two weeks. Mm -hmm. If I've but ranked then you, up and then just, ranked down, I stay. Keep in, mind, keep in mind that you're at, you oh, know, you're at, se you're, at, you're at 79 hours and you're playing, uh, and you're not playing Super Serious yet. Yeah. When yeah, you're at, I get that. When you're, totally yeah, get when that. you're at like that Dota hours or something so like that, I, I think I'm and then probably, you're doing it like competitively, it's going to be, it's, it, it's, there's, I think there's a I'm lot in, going on there. I think you guys are the outliers here. I think I am in the majority player base where I'm not playing super serious. I'm absolutely a casual player. So I, I think you're the, probably right. So what I think about the game and how I feel about the game probably matters more than you super serious guys. I there. think it's between you and I. I don't think it's okay. all the way down to you, and I don't think it's up towards me. I definitely would say Josh is probably on the outlier on the top end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I still think that there's a psychological effect of, I mean, you, you get a thousand hours into this game, and once you start ranking up or you rank down, damn it, I got to get that rank back. Yeah. But anyway, we've, yeah. we've talked about Rocket League for a, for a long time. Right. Yeah. Sorry about that. But the new update's fun. I think the map is cool. I just love. I'd map. like to see more meat. This, as them. far as uh, summarizing, I think I think there oh, I think there's going to be big changes in the future, and I think that everything they've done in this update uh, indicates that. So we, just we you know, stay the tuned. The battle pass is going to be cool. We we buried the lead here. Uh, there's now a shitty watercolor player banner. And other that's the, probably the items. most important yeah. update. Oh. Yeah. So, so really, play, get the banner, and then you can stop playing Rocket League. Again. And one quick, lighthearted question: yeah. Why in the fuck when they make a new map, they always make it too fucking bright? It's not too it's bright. Always it's too not, bright. It's not that it's bright. Fine. It's not that bright. No, it's wonderful. My uh, like, I should give you my outside camera is bright. Yeah. When it's sunny, it's bright. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? I'm inside, damn it. I'm trying to be pale. Don't give me a tan for playing fucking Rocket League. You are. I feel you pretty are tanned. Then. You are the most outdoorsy person here. You shouldn't be saying that. Yeah. D -Lies when I'm indoors, I'm indoors. It's but too yeah, bright. See, D-Lies agrees. All but, right. Oh, so anyway, what, what you guys came here for is for Josh and I to discuss Dark Souls Remastered. <laughs> yeah. <because> it actually... <laughs> now that D-Lies is here, we can start talking yeah. about that. Uh, right, so we'll see you later. We'll see you later, Eric. Yeah, it Bye. was supposed to drop on the 25th. It did not. It came out two days early, and I didn't know until somebody at work said, oh, wow, Dark Souls on sale already? I was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God, I have to go home. So I left, and I took, the, I took that Friday off, and I played four days over a holiday weekend of Dark Souls. <laughs> D-Lies, this is when I will say bye to you. To so... Be I, I will be back to when be, you come back. To be fair, we shouldn't talk about it very much because it's just a remaster, so there's uh, not well, really I, new. I, we're not I going wanna, to. I do want to talk about, I do talk about the, the Steam community's reaction to Dark Souls Remastered. So when it came out, I went to the Steam page, and it said mixed reviews. And there are a shit ton of people giving negative reviews to Dark Souls Remastered, saying, hold the fuck on. You mean this area is still broken? This enemy still has this bug? The backstab mechanic can still be chained? What the fuck are you doing from software? Why am I even, am I even paying you? Hold on, I can get the same type of thing by modding the shit out of my game. Why would I give you $20? I, they literally promised two things. Your game will run at 60 FPS, up to 4K. Also, we have 4K textures now. Enjoy. The, Those the are most. The, yeah, and, and, it's just a that's quick a remaster. Overhaul. That, that is well, a remaster. It was. It was exactly yeah. what they promised. Yeah. The, the, the new best, net code is fantastic. I, it literally, the best thing that. Yeah. The best thing, like no questions about this one. The best thing, and they should, and everyone should have just, just bit the bullet and bought because, the best thing about this is you got to experience. Day one, Dark Souls, and Tom, I want so you to talk good. to me, talk to me about it. Okay. What was your experience? So I played Dark Souls way after it came out. I, I was way late to the party, and I played alone. Dark Souls is a very oppressive, lonely game, and I played completely alone for the vast majority of it. Um, this, there was, there were always people with summon signs everywhere. I walked around human because I didn't feel. 
Like, I, I didn't walk around, around human before because there was literally no reason to. Here, there are just summon signs everywhere. I was writing my sign. I was like, yeah, sure. I'll put my shit outside a boss door. Oh, look, I'm farming souls by helping people. Everyone was super pumped. They were all defeating bosses together. I went into a battle with three other people. There were four people versus a boss. It was nuts. Uh, and it is just insane amounts of fun. I will... The next From Software game, I am absolutely buying at launch because it's just the best way to play. Um, Joke's on you. It's going to be a racing simulator. Probably. <laughs> I'll still buy it day yeah. one. <laughs> the, um, the Dark Souls of no, racing like, games. It's just like there's little elements, especially in Dark Souls 1 that, that they had, like the bell ringing and things like that. Like it's it's really, really, it's really beautiful. Like when you go in and it's just ringing off the hook, it's just going. Like yeah. these are all, because okay, so the bell, I don't know if you guys know, but every time someone completes the uh, the gargoyles, boss and then goes to the top and rings the bell that's actually other people ringing that bell that's that's it happening will ring in your game yeah so hmm. it, so it's just in a constant state of ringing and just never drops and it's really cool and it's really sad like later on when you've been playing for you know like a thousand hours in and you're sitting there and then the, the bells like stopped ringing and, it's, and every it's once nice. in a while you hear a ring and it's just it's just like oh, okay i guess we're done with this game it's it's really you know? nice when when you get to that boss door after it's killed you three or four times you're like god fucking damn it i'm gonna go through this again and then you hear that bell ring and you're like well that guy did it i think i can do it too it's just it's just <laughs> a little more hope just a little bit to push you over the edge <laughs> But yeah, but I, anyway, I think that's... They, they delivered exactly what they said they were going to. I think it's fantastic. I paid 20 bucks because I owned the previous one. I think at 40 bucks, if you don't have Dark Souls 1, absolutely worth the purchase price. And it runs like a fucking dream. Oh, are we done? Uh, so <laughs> anyway, about Dark Souls 2, I want to discuss the level design no, okay. changes between no, no, the no, two. No, 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 no. But talking oh. about Dark... No. Yeah, Dark Souls 3 was way better. I think the level it design really in Dark Souls <laughs> so, It was a return to form. So, Adam, uh, how was the yeah. end of the forest with Dark Soul Invader? Yeah, the forest actually was really cool. Um, and it was even cooler if you completely ignore the stupid survival crafting base building thing. Oh, yeah? Me and, me and Dark Soul Invader played through, because it does have a story. And... Uh, one of the big parts about this game is exploring the underground caves and you can do all the story stuff basically by going through all the caves and getting certain items so you can go to the other caves and you know eventually get to this other area that we um story wooden caves no there's more and i'm not going to say what it is because that would be spoilers it's but aliens the ending, the ending threw me for a loop it was not at all what i expected adam i don't and think i'm going to beat it and I want you to tell me because once we're done with the cast, because my yeah. God, there are so many questions that game raises while you're going through it some of the It was actually dungeons. Shantae, the half genie yeah. hero, the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like the most riveting story concept or or whatever, but it was interesting and it was fun to go through it and see it. And it and was good. I liked it a lot. Don't undersell the crafting stuff because I actually enjoyed the survival. Yeah, aspect I mean the, the base building in the game is great, and the survival aspect, and you're going to get raided, and it's going to get hard, and there's a lot of crazy, creepy monsters, and some of them will just kind of bust through your structures, no problem. So, but yeah, it was a good. I, it was a good I don't know. It was good. I'm I'm glad I actually waited for the release and actually played through the thing after owning it for four years in early access. <laughs> you gotta love it when a game finally comes out. Yeah. So, um, another game that you were working on, did you ever finish Hollow Knight? No, no. Um, I did play some more of it. It's a long game. There's a lot to explore. But I actually have a notebook. I've been going through the map, and when I get to a spot that I don't have the stuff to get through yet, I put it on my notebook so that I remember to revisit that area later once I get a different item or something. Like, I just got a double jump mechanic that I didn't have the first 12 hours of playing. So now I can go through a bunch of new areas that I couldn't get to before. So Nice. That's kind of the appeal of the game. Very cool. Metroidvania. Yeah. <laughs> but I played a, a new game that I hadn't played before. Oh. And it's really just a demo. Um, there was a teaser of this driving horror game. Oh, hmm. what? A while back. What? 
Yes. Yes. What um, are, are there you, were some videos it, like a teaser trailer. The Saints Row no. with the zombies. Yeah. Um, and they just released a demo. It's called Beware. Um, it's not... I don't want to say it's crazy, horror, scary, holy shit kind of game, but it's pretty unique. It's very creepy, um, and it kind of revolves around car chases, basically. So where's um, the horror? The demo is short, uh, being chased by a car and the, the atmosphere. So the game has a very dark, gritty uh, visual style, and it is very... It's kind of surreal. Like, it's got this... You're in some kind of other creepy world driving at night, and there are these people that basically chase you. And is it So it's dual of the game? Uh, I don't know. Um, it's kind of... It's a, it's a really, really early demo. But it's kind of open world. Um, like, apparently there's going to be some kind of story, uh, some characters that you can meet or whatever. But uh, the main thing of the game, I guess, is you're driving this car and the physics are hard. It's really easy to spin out. All the roads are wet and it's just tense, you know, when you're driving through and then all of a sudden you see the headlights come in behind you on your rear view mirror and you're like, oh, fuck. So then you have to try to lose them and it's just really hard but it seems like it's going to be cool i've not seen a driving game that actually explores this concept of this dark brooding kind of atmosphere with all this tension so have i think it could be you. cool i think it could be cool that's interesting that's mm. really 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 unique yeah mm -hmm. and if they're chasing you they're going to try to ram your car or whatever, but if your car stops, they'll like pull up and stop and then like four dudes will get out and they've all got this like weird mask on. And if they basically surround your car oh. for a certain amount of time, they'll hit your car and then that's the end, the no, game over. State. Adam, Adam, this isn't a horror game. That's actually a simulation game. Uh, it's, it's a simulation of uh, Gary, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You lost boy. <laughs> uh. I myself it's, it's 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 worth playing. It's a free demo. Beware. I Take was also playing a demo. Show some promise. Oh, what yeah? are you playing? But this demo is more of a triple A variety demo. Mario Tennis Aces baby. That shit's coming out the end of this month. And it is Need good. Mm. It is good. I so, tried to download it. It didn't work for me for some reason. I'll have to revisit that. Uh, I love me some Mario Tennis. This has the touches of the classic Mario Tennis with some power shit upgrades. Really good. Um, if I don't, so you've never played it before, Josh. Um, no. I think, have, did you ever play Strikers? No. Have you played any Mario sporting games? No. Oh, okay. Oh, um, well, well <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of a way to put this because it's, it's not a sim. But it's not like Wii Sports. They're they're arcadey. Yeah, it's arcadey for sure. Yeah. Um, it is okay. It's like Mario like Kart. Mario Kart for Kart Mar race. Yeah. Mario Kart to Gran Turismo is Mario Tennis to Virtual Tennis kind of thing. Okay, I never played Virtual Tennis, but I'm with you. Okay, yeah, Mario yeah, Strikers was <laughs> fucking great. Strikers was amazing. Um, uh, as of right now, my favorite Mario game, but tennis will probably take it. But um, they're introducing some new concepts of like these power shots where if you get to a spot in a certain amount of time, you can use energy that you build up through the match to do these targeted quick shots. And Did you ever play um, Disc Jam? Does it, does it play something like that? That's, yeah, what I that, it. Well, That's how I envision it. In the arcadey way. It actually plays more like tennis. Yeah. But it has that kind of feel to it where you're hooking shots, you're trying to get from one side to the other really quick, and you get a special shot. It's not going to be like doing L shapes and stuff like in um, Disc Jam, but mm. it'll be more of you get exact accuracy on where you want to put it and it goes super quick. Mm. And then your opponent has the ability to use his energy to slow down time to get over to it. And you build up energy by doing trick shots through the match. 
So it's kind of a risk reward where you might fuck up a standard hit and give up a point, but if you hit it, you're going to get energy that might allow you to do a really badass shot later. Also, speaking of disc jam, I'm going to echo AOL Messenger's instant uh, or AOL instant messengers uh, thoughts here and talk about fucking wasted potential. No, it actually turned out okay once they fixed the net code. Uh, I was just the bad. initial net code was trash. <clears throat> Uh, give me. Actually, I like the game. I I like the idea of the game. I did not like their execution. I well, I feel once they got the netcode fixed, it played very well. I might have to go back. Uh, it's not free though. Um, but yeah, that's Mario Tennis. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be at the end of the month. Um, Mario game. It's good. It's good shit. And I got one more game I want to get out there real quick. Actually, possibly two, but one right now. Uh, there is a free game on the Switch right now, and it coincided with an announcement that uh, Nintendo announced that the new Pokemon game will be coming the end of the year, uh, works with Pokemon Go, blah 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 But there's a new Pokemon game out right now called Pokemon Quest, and it's free on the Switch. Okay. Um, it's what kinda, is it? It's kind of cool. So you get the Pokemon element of, like, you get three in your party. Uh, they're free-roaming Pokemon. Like, they're on their own, and they just kind of run around, and when you get into battle, it becomes like Final Fantasy timed attacks kind of thing, where you say... So, when like, you- Tamagotchi tactics? What? Never, that's a thing. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it seems like. Oh, if I had to create a game, it would be called Tamagotchi tactics. It that's really what is. it sounds like. <laughs> the co- it's kind of like Final Fantasy 12-ish, where it's free roam, but you still have timed attacks. And you okay. have three Pokemon you're controlling and flowing back and forth. You still level. Uh, they set up the worlds very Mario-esque, where it's like one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one boss, two, one, two, 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 three. And mm. there's a recommended party level to get into it. So it's free. I've, I've only put a couple hours into it. It's fun. I'll um, check it out. If you like grinding number jumping games by putting stones on things and equipping items, it's your kind of game. If Never you mind. feel you need oh. to have a lot of control in the character combat, like super technical, you probably won't like it. But then again, you probably don't like Pokemon if you want to get super technical with combat. So, so Erk, there's something that you and I both played independently and bought independently, and we just found out that we had done the same thing while building our show notes today. No, I knew you did before because oh, did I'm you? a creep and I look to see who's like oh, okay. a Dota. Cool. It tells you who's done what, and okay. you beat me to it. All right. So, Irk and I bought Dota Plus, which is a $4 a month subscription to Dota. You don't need this subscription to play. It just gives you extra graphs and shit. And it also gives you extra currency that after the match, you can buy whatever you want with. Yeah. Um, they give you challenges, which is kind of cool. Like, it'll say, hey, uh, you need to use this kind of character and do this in a match. Yeah. Oh, you did it? Here's some gold you can spend on cosmetics. Yep. Oh, so it's their battle pass? No. That's they have. Like. They already have a battle. Pass. They, they've had a battle pass for a while, but that's their battle pass is different. Yes. So this um, is their take on their battle pass. Basically, ties into the international, and so you will get like actually uh, packs of trading cards. Like you get baseball cards for Dota players, and then you can build a fantasy roster and do cool fantasy stuff. You get quests related to the international, and you can do bets. You can vote for yeah. Arcana. And as you level up your battle pass, you get a set item. Yeah. The Dota Plus thing is you're getting currency that you get to spend on whatever the fuck you want, yeah. whenever you want. There's no level to it. Oh, so, okay. I'm with you. They've, they've got a couple cool things, like um, percentage of winning. Watching this table, trying to make sure it doesn't fall over. Continue. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so... In uh, in a spectator match, you've got graphs like, oh, here's net worth of each team, and here's XP worth over time. Uh, they actually have uh, calculated win percentages now, which is really cool. So if you're watching a match, you can say, ah, well, according to the machine learning models applied to Dota 2 and Dota 2 matches, we predict that this team will win uh, with you know 15% accuracy. And you can watch that graph go up and down. Uh, you can now see exactly what killed you and how bad it killed you uh, in the death percentage graphs. Um, there's a lot of poached, uh, post-match statistics stuff that you can get out of this. Uh, my favorite thing, though, and the thing I think has a middling effectiveness uh, is the uh, AI item buying thing. 
So basically it will it will analyze, okay, here's your team, here's mm. the enemy team. Based on these heroes, based on all of the data we've gathered thus far, here are three different builds that you can put this character in that will give you the highest percentage chance to win. You select one of those and it replaces the, the text guides that you would use in Dota 2 and instead gives you uh, essentially an AI generated list of this, these items on this character gives you the best percentage to win against these other people with the synergies on your team. It's kind of like a what's hot now. Kind yeah, of thing. it's it's super interesting. Uh, I like the way they've built it. I don't think it's it's great. I've gone off script a few times just because I didn't like what they were doing. Um, or I, I didn't like how my match was going. But keep in mind, this is actually nothing more than bringing in what... There was a site called Dota Buff. <clears throat> and they yes. had these metrics on their site. This is bringing it all in first party now. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I think it's, it's four bucks a month. Uh, it's... Cheaper if you do for a year, but yeah. I just wanted to try it out, see yeah. what it was. That's why I did the four bucks. I'm going to try it out again this month. I like it. Uh, I think it's it was definitely worth my four dollars. I already got some items out of it. Um, it's it's interesting. Uh, we'll have to see. I don't know. It got me playing Dota a little bit more, and uh, it has the added. I don't want to call it a benefit. Uh, it's got the added side effect of oh well, I paid four bucks this month. I should probably play a little bit of Dota. Yeah, that's my weekend game. Yeah. That's my Sunday morning play with my buddy cross country game. Yep. But there are some new games on the docket as well. There are. And Josh actually has one of them. I do. I've been playing Shantae. But what is it? The Half Genie Half Genie Hero? Hero? Half Genie Hero, I think is the title. That game's really fun. It's a Metrovania. Um, you just kind of like a uh, hero and you're saving your land out plot doesn't make any sense to me but it doesn't matter um the gameplay is really fun um it's just platforming and then you have a little bit of uh reminds me a little about like what you're explaining hollow knight to be uh adam like where you you know there's certain areas you can't get to if you don't mm -hmm. if you can't do x y and z um right kind of standard metroidvania procedure right except this one has zones which is really straightforward right like just you just go it's really really traditional in that sense like you're just you go, you have like all these different zones and you go through each zone and you fight the boss at the end and it's good. But in this one, you go back and you can replay the area and there's like RPG elements into it. Like there'll be like people hanging out and you'll, and you'll get like little quests within that little area and you'll, and you'll play within that area, even though it's like just a side scroll, oh. you know, thing. And they'll give you little simple tasks to do nothing like. So this is this has been my my big issue with a lot of games lately, and it's weird because it's kind of counterintuitive. But games have been getting like so big and expansive that I don't feel compelled to play them. If that makes any sense, yeah. just because of the time and you know maybe where I'm at, um, it just doesn't. They're not compelling to me like Zelda. I can't I can't sit down and play it. I just can't. I said try, it's but I can't. It's basically it's just... the only reason I haven't played any Witcher games. Right, and I they're totally cool. They are from. big, and it's fine. Like, and it's fine that they're they're gigantic and expansive and whatever. And same thing. And with Mario, it's cool, but like, I don't feel any sense of progression. Like, there's just, yeah, I'm gonna go say Peach, and yeah, there's some things, and I'll, I guess I can explore over there if I want, but I don't know. Uh, I guess you know, it's that's that's what it feels like. I throughout the whole thing. So the Switch has kind of just been sort of put to the side for a while for me. And then when I pick this game up, it's it's kind of like I've been picking up the Switch more, playing the Switch more. It's really, really good. It's simple. There's not a lot like not a lot of crazy stuff going to it. It's just uh simple platforming that's really precision oriented. Nintendo so will the, do a lot of that for you, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And this one, and this one, there's, you know, there's a definite spike after the first like level or so. There's like the first level is like stupid easy. And then right after that, it gets really hard. It reminds me of games like Aladdin. It reminds me of games like uh, uh, Lion King. That's oh, what I get. No, don't say that. Yeah. No one's going to buy this now. Or they'll, oh, at least so get saying, to the saying they'll, they'll get three levels in and it will be impossible yeah. to beat just so they can fuck over Blockbuster. So they'll see yeah. the giraffes mm -hmm. and just stop. Yeah. 
Yes, exactly. That's exactly what's going to happen. That's exactly what this game is. And if you are a masochist and enjoy Dark Souls, you should probably get it because it's quite good. The, uh, there's all sorts of little mechanics to it. Like you, you can uh, transform in all these different things that have different abilities. Like you can transform into a monkey that can jump and jump and cling to walls. You can transform into like um, a big elephant that can crash through walls. Like there's all these little things and you unlock them as you go through the game. Mm. And you can do different things based on that. And, um, and it's really great. Like you'll play through the first two or three levels straight through and then you'll, you'll hit a wall and you're like, what do I do? And then you'll have to go talk to the townspeople and they give you advice and, and they don't like tell you straight out, like, this is your quest marker. You need to go to, you need to go from A to B. They're like, Hey, there's a person somewhere. You should probably talk to them. They're, they're really cool. And then someone else will be like, Oh, I heard there was a, you know, a witch underneath, you know, in this area. They're like, Oh, okay. And then you're piecing together everything that everyone's telling you and you just go do it. And it's simple. It's not convoluted. There's not like chapters of dialogue that you have to read. You don't have to learn the like the whole life story of some peasant and her kid before you can just make this thing happen. And the fetch quests all kind of cascade together. So you're like, you talk to a couple people and you figure out what you're supposed to do and you go do that. And then you kind of like, you know, like, oh, this woman would like a sandwich, but this one uh, has a sandwich, but has a ticket. And then you just kind of figure out what you want to do to get that ticket and then you just cascade everything down because everything happens together it's really it's hard to explain in that regard um but you don't have to do so many little piddly things throughout the whole process you could just explore find what you want and then progress the story but like everything has a sense of completion which is really cool and it sounds like you hit on something there that's big for me recently is for the most part there's a couple games aside. I don't care about the story. Just let me have fun while I'm playing it. Right, exactly. And and it this one is on the type of game for me. I mean, I get it. Like like I get it with like Witcher, I get it with Zelda, I get it with all of these ones. Like I get it. It makes sense. They're great games. They're amazing games in their genre. Um it's just not for me not right now. Like I just want to get in, I want to burn through a couple levels and I want to go to bed. Yeah. You know, um, and and this one does it for me. This one you're you're in. There's uh, there's enough like little puzzly things. Like, OK, so how do I accomplish this task? Like and then you, it gets you thinking You're you're kind of wondering how how all the pieces connect and how everything is, you know, how how you're supposed to get up there to get this thing. But, you know, you're not spending your whole life figuring it out. You know, it's it's fairly straightforward. Um, it's hard enough, but not too hard. It's very completable. But this version was really interesting because this one comes with um, all these different ways to play it. So I played through the standard main game. Uh, the, when, you, when you get them right out of the gate, they don't, like, they don't screw around and say, like, oh, you must complete 100% completion with all the birds and the bees unlocked, right? Like, what? no, you just, they just give I you... Didn't know you know how like, games game. have weird-ass like, prerequisites before <laughs> you can try like, the unique fun modes, right? Um, this one, they just give them all to you. So you can play through the main game with like the RPG element like that I'm telling you about. Or you can just start with all the powers and play straight A to B. You can play through the whole game as a different character entirely with different abilities entirely. And there's like five or six uh, different ways. There's a hardcore mode for, you know, you masochists out there. Um, all of these things exist and they exist out of the gate. And you can bounce between them because there's multiple save files for every single one of them. So you can just play this game. And that's kind of really what I love about certain games. Like what I really loved in, about Bayonetta was the fact that you just pick it up and you just play it. It's just a game. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just a game. This one is fantastic because it's a game. Um, have you looked at um, the Donkey Kong that released on the Switch recently? For yeah, topics? I did. I did look at that. I uh, didn't pick it up yet. I picked that up. It's... It's really good. It I is only hear good things about it. It is vintage ass Donkey Kong Country. It is really that sounds good. really good. Well, Donkey bleh, Donkey Kong Country Returns was fucking amazing on the Wii, um, and you know if I can get more of that on the Switch, hell yeah, yeah. It, it's really good. Um, this was initially a Wii U game, ported over to Switch. Okay. Um, they're doing a lot of that because we you sucked um, or didn't sell rather I should say probably yeah. but um, yeah it's really good and if that's the kind of thing you're into Josh is just the idea of hey I'm going to run through these couple levels 
maybe find something mm-hmm. that triggers my brain for a little bit and then put it down that that it, it, it's a sweet spot for you it's really oh, absolutely good. and I, noticed- I think that's really that's really what i wanted to play um lately is just like a platformer, like a good platformer maybe maybe our uh when we did our um game jam it really got me excited to play platformers maybe i should get into hollow knight like adam or something like that um this one sounds really good um but i don't know something something about um going back and having the whole environment change uh was really special with this one i thought it was kind of cool and the a art cool... it looks really nice oh yeah it is really it is really nice i i, I was a big it's... fan whenever i was looking up the screenshots so of it. so before i knew better i would always look at shantae in the ads and i'd be like it, it looks like a generic mascot platformer who the fuck cares until i looked into right. the reviews and someone said no this is the best metroid game since fucking super metroid it's amazing it's like wait what the fuck yeah it's got a really crazy cult following and i think yeah. it's still like in the cult following kind of thing i think i think it's it sounds to me like it's a bayonetta like where there's like a little group of people that are like no you don't understand like nah i'm not gonna do it dude there's movies you know like <laughs> i don't want anyone catching me watching this that's that's how that's how it is you know yeah that's as as far as bayonetta is concerned <laughs> yeah i i would if i got bayonetta because i i really want bayonetta but i don't want to ever play it in public it's like one of those things where i'd go back into my bedroom under under the cover of darkness and be like all right i'm gonna play bayonetta now because no one can see me play bayonetta it's not no, like it's not like rocket yeah, League. i can play it in public Bayonetta is amazing. I, I I think I streamed a bunch of that when I was playing through it. I yeah, it's absolutely it's uh, like like Shane says, it's one of his friend's favorite games of all time. It's and I can see why. Like when you sit down and play through Bayonetta, you'll it's, see why. It's just it's supposed to be just fun. It's outlandish and fun. And that's yeah, that's okay. Absolutely. And from I, what I I've will, seen, over sexual too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's just it's, it's just campy. It's gratuitous. It's just campy. Like they're just they're just in it, and they don't they know what they are, and they go through. Like Bayonetta <laughs> has a character encapsulate what ga- Bayonetta the game is perfectly. She knows what she is, and she just is what she is. And the game is the same way. The game is what it is, and it embraces it. So, unlike Shantae, which is a quick pick up and play game i've actually been playing through the witcher 3 uh i have <laughs> polar opposite yeah um yeah. i i will say this in in defense of the witcher 3 it has a lot of really nice uh nice to your player stopping points so i nice, i was yeah. i i have completed the main story uh, and i'll get into that in a bit spoiler free of course uh, and i've been going through the first of the two big dlcs um in this DLC, there was a mission, and we were setting something up, and it was going to be a big, involved fucking thing. And it gives you the option. It says, all right, we can do this. Let's go now. Or uh, one of the dialogue options is, I'll meet up with you guys there. And it's great. If I chose the second option, I said, hey, I'll meet up with you guys there. I've got to go take care of something. And it just returns you to the world, and you can save anywhere. I press start. I hit save game. I turn it off. And in the morning, I came right back to it, and I was right there. Um, it gives you in, in every big mission right before you get into something involved, it does give you a great stopping point. It's optional. You don't have to stop, but it'll let you exit the game. But my issue with those kind of stopping points is they're artificial in a way where, yes, it's, you're good to go to bed that night, Mm. but try to come back three months from now and then pick up right before that big battle. Um, so in the main story that doesn't happen because when you load up the game, because it's an, a big open world game, it has a fairly lengthy loading time, not GTA 5, but it takes a minute or two. Um, they actually have micro cutscenes that play summarizing where you're at in the story right before you load into the game. So it's like Geralt was just getting done, you know, slicing this dude up because he was a fucking asshole. And now he's going to go slice up this other dude because he just doesn't fucking like his face. So, and then the game loads in. So when you're doing side missions for two months, you get the same load <laughs> screen every time for two months. Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah, so it's it's not perfect. It's a cool it, mechanic, but man, that could be annoying if you don't do the quest. It was, it really was. And every time you load into a new, like, big area, um, like if you travel halfway across the map, then yes, it will play that cutscene again. So it's it's not perfect, but it's 
it's good to remind you where you're at in the story. Um, I, I will say that the DLC, I, the gaming industry has trained me that, hey, I'm going to buy this DLC and it's going to be one mission and I'm going to get Johnny Gat out of it. And <laughs> I paid $15 for literally a skin. And in The Witcher 3, I have gotten at least 12 more hours of content out of it and I'm not fucking done yet. I am still going through these quests. Like, everything from tiny little shitty side quests to the big main quest, it's taken me 12 hours so far, and I'm still nowhere near the end of this thing. Uh, I am super, super happy with it. Uh, I will say that, you know, for Cyberpunk 2077, when it comes out, if they announce DLC, which they will, I'll just buy it. I don't have to wait for anything. I, I know I'm going to get my money's worth, and I, I know I'm going to get a shit ton of content for relatively small amounts of money. Uh, I, I gotta say, the story in The Witcher 3 was good. Uh, sure, predictable in places, but it was a lot of fun. It was just a good old-fashioned adventure. The thing that intrigues me about Witcher 3 is kind of what you've hit on before. It's the ambiguity of there is no right yeah. side to help in certain situations. And they, they continue that up until the very end of the game. And even I, I even the very that. end. You're, there are no good guys. There are no bad guys. There are just people with motives. I, I like that. And it, like, it was great. Jean and I were talking in the car on the way to get the pup today. And she's like, you know, I'd kind of be interested in that. I'm like, I think you would like it. Cause I'm like, there's this ambiguous space of, well, shit, I really don't know which way I should help because oh, the typical games, yeah. it's either you want to be bad or you want to be good. And you go down that path. And, and you know what? I thought I chose the right thing. I thought I was being a good person. I thought I was defending the people from justice. And then this guy is like, well, fine, you didn't fucking kill that guy, so I'll just take care of it myself later. I come back to that town after, like, two other side missions, they fucking killed the dude. <laughs> and not in, like, a nice way. They, like, fucking tortured him. I'm just like, what the fuck, man? I was trying to do the right thing, and you just you just murdered this guy. And then he's like, yeah, I took care of that problem. And then you have the option to, like, fucking kill the guy, and you're like, well, do I bring justice to this dude who just blatantly tortured and murdered this guy? Who kind of deserved it. Or do I walk away? It's it doesn't leave you with easy choices a lot of the time. I like that. I like when I like when villains aren't uh, when it's not super clear whether what's good and bad. I yeah. I, I think we had a pretty long discussion in Discord uh, on that on Discord with a bunch of people talking about uh, like certain Marvel villains and how like they really stood out. Uh, some of the more recent ones really stood out uh, to us because. Um, you can see why they were bad. You're like, you can see why they were doing what they were doing. And it could easily just be, you know, it could be flipped. The script could be absolutely flipped. And I, and I love that. Like if it was a different perspective and, you know, a, a light was cast in a different direction, you know, you could be rooting for a different person. Yeah. And I, I mean, like that. I think that's I, good writing. I think you guys hit the nail on the head because I, I had trouble and I still have trouble coming to The Witcher because it is a big game to get involved with. Like if I want to mm. you know, play a game for 10 minutes, I don't go to The Witcher 3. But even if you've got an hour, uh, the game is nice enough to let you exit after that and it won't leave you in a bad place to get out of it. Also, F5 is That's quick good. save. So if you just need to bounce, F5 and exit. That's it, man. I, I would good. highly, I would highly, very good. highly recommend this game. And it's like, what, 20 bucks on Steam for the Game of the Year edition or something? I can't do that until I lose my job because I don't do well with massive games because I don't do well with <laughs> F5 and Get Out. <laughs> I'm the guy that says one more match of Rocket League. 45 minutes later, I'm still playing. Yeah. I know we don't typically do this, but uh, Shane, thanks a lot for the 500 bits, man. We really appreciate that. That's yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, holy shit. Ooh. There's, there's a bit more going on. And, and local with the uh, 342. Jesus Christ, you guys. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. But Killing it. I got two more new games I want to talk about. Solitaire. Solitaire. What are you on, waiting for? But, Solitaire on Windows 95. No, 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 no. Bust a, bust a move? Free Cell. <gasps> Y'all ever heard of this game called Free Cell? No, nah, fucking no. tell me about it. Lay it on me. Break it down. So you get like six decks of cards. And you only use the red cards. I've only got two, man. What? You have to go the buy four cards. more. Fuck. Yeah, dude. It's segregation 101. You only use the red cards. Shit. And Sounds then like from there. But no, um, uh, <laughs> stick fight. Uh, it was part of the humble monthly, uh, or not humble monthly, the humble multiplayer bundle. This game is fucking fun. Four player. 
uh, jump around, pick up guns, just destroy the environment, be the last man standing. Each round lasts like 30 seconds. And it just endlessly <laughs> loops going next round, next round, next round. And there's all these different items that just fall from the sky to pick up to shoot with. Like there's this huge snake gun. And I was fucked up because the very first match I played, there's a snake gun. They shot and it bit me and it killed me. Like a, after a few bites, it killed me. I'm like, well, shit, snakes kill you. Then all of a sudden this other big bazooka looking thing falls. I'm like, what the fuck's that? And he shoots it and I'm like, oh, it's a snake. I got to dodge. And what happens is the big snakes actually push you. So this fucker hits me and then drives me off the match. <laughs> And it's well, fun awesome. because like, you'll get like these grenade launchers and someone's standing on the platform. You just shoot the ground out from under them. They fall to the death or like you punch and kick them to kill them. And nice. It's just a really fun brawler. Um, and then another game in the bundle that we followed it up with because we was playing it. Uh, Predator Tricks, AOL and um, Dobby. We were all playing it. We got into some duck game. Um, actually, duck game. Duck, duck, duck. <laughs> actually, I don't <laughs> think <laughs> uh, <laughs> Predator <Pretos> wasn't <laughs> with us, but. Duck game is fun, and yes, like Adam said, you can make your duck quack to taunt everyone when you win. That is great. It's very much the same style of game. The maps are not as procedural feeling. It's not as much destroy the environment feeling, but it's still there's random guns on the match or map. Get to them, kill the opponent. Be your last duck standing. But there is a score on that one. And the objective is to be the first to win 10 matches. It's it's a really fun uh, quack It's good, time. silly fun. I haven't played it, but I've watched some people play it. Yeah, it, it was really, really good. Really fun. And it's it's a nice, quick-paced multiplayer game. Like, um, I don't know if you guys ever played with us much, but we did, like, speedrunners as a nice four-player multi, just in and out after a little bit. Yeah, we played with, with Bird, and he's... He's quite good at that game. It's got that kind of feel, which is really nice. And yes, Bird is a fucking ridiculous ass. I think that's that one game. of those games. There's a couple. There's a lot of these games, and and um, that are really really fun when you first play them with friends that have are playing them for the first time. But really really not fun <laughs> when some random person is very good at it. And I think Speedrunners is a good example of that because the further you get away. Everyone you know, else it's, gets it's fucked. It's a curve. So if someone's like really good at it and everyone else is really bad at it, it just annihilates the fun from the game for those people. The camera... Thing with yeah, it's a race. Just to clarify for people that don't know, it's a race and the camera locks on the person in first pretty much. Oh. So as the person in first pulls farther away, once you leave the screen, you're eliminated. Yeah, that's super mm. fun for the people just playing for the first time. Um, yeah. The other one that's really bad is, uh, is Overcooked. Oh, I see, love I, Overcooked. Overcooked when one person uh, is very good and everyone else is just playing it for the first time. It's not super fun. Not super fun. I'm just going to say it right now. <laughs> I'm say you were that one person more than one time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, it, we, we have a pretty toxic Overcooked house and we've, we've touched on it before, but I, I definitely think Overcooked is one of those games. Indeed. I still have never played that game anything but cooperative. I've never played competitive. Yeah, I haven't either. I, I think no, there, I, no, I don't think there is a competitive mode. It's oh. just that people just take it too seriously in my house. Oh, see, we took That's it seriously, fair. but all of us took it seriously when we were doing it, which was we awesome. We took it very we, seriously. We literally broke out plans. a whiteboard and some dry erase markers and made fucking plans before we went That's into awesome. a stage. And well, then we, we had, late we had for a good, real life plans that we had planned for over a week. Because, exactly. Because we, we were too busy playing Overcooked. I was in town That's from late. Washington and we were late to our shit because we were planning how to <laughs> cook these soups. <laughs> That's awesome. We just, instead of doing that, we went to toxicity and controller breaking. <laughs> That's always fair. So, so it, was, it was the healthier approach of the two. Eric, is that your dog? No. Oh. What? Well, like, no, were you talking about? Yet. Were you talking about me? You were reaching I'm, down. Yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a dumbass with a rolly chair, and my cable got stuck in the wheel. Oh. Yeah, the, the dogs, the dogs there, over, over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, but yes, I was gonna say, wait, what? what? Is there, wait, do you show us the dog, please? Oh <laughs> no, no, it's not here. Maybe next cast, uh, she'll be more lively. Right. And I'll show yeah. you. But she's she's been asleep. All right. As Tom says, I was playing the ten dogs. Yeah. Erk, Erk's been playing Nintendo Dogs. That was, IRL. Yeah, that was going to be my next segue into that. Oh, is that the Nintendo Dogs thing? Dog, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went Nintendo to dogs. pick up our puppy today. Is there a 
and ten dogs. So, so what? What? What's okay. the what's the pupper's name, Erk? The puppy the pupper's name is Aloy, because there's a lot of awesome parallels there. So, Aloy, for all of you who don't know, is the main character in Horizon Zero Dawn. She is white. She is a ginger. She is a hunter. My dog is a Brittany Spaniel. She is white with orange splotches. She is a hunting dog. So, parallels. I went with it. Yeah, that's right. Aloy, get over it. All right, neat. Yeah, but that's what Tom was asking about. But, yes. So I need to make a cooking mama. I was just Googling Nintendogs to see if there actually was a new Nintendogs coming out at some point. Because that would be hilarious to just find that out right now. But I would really like them to make a cooking mama on the Switch. Nah. No. Yeah. Don't, don't worry, guys. And, what? um, yeah, no cooking mama for the Switch. Ever. Oh, no. What? Why Tom, not? turn around. What? Oh. And, um, here is the, uh, new dog. Hey. Oh, it's a puppers. Hey. Puppy stream, everybody. And Tom is currently holding <laughs> Aloy. So, what are you doing? The newest member of the 72 PC team is oh, Aloy. Oh my god. Well, I That's guess a... we're done here. Um, I'll see you guys later. You could just do puppy cam. I think that'll that'll sustain. We got more viewers. I think now there's can 11. Can we get another viewers. Can we get another box on an overlay for the puppy for the next yeah. cast? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we'll actually get a webcam just for her to watch her reaction yeah. as Tom and I just yell mindlessly. Just well, we'll talk and the, the the whole cam will be the puppy. We can actually get rid of other cams. Yeah, perfect. get rid of all of us. Just show yeah, her the whole just, time. Just the puppy. Yeah. All right, we can just take a quick poll and chat. Um, oh, time out. Time out. Time out. AOL just had the best line. <laughs> she is the best cast member because she does not talk any Dark Souls. <laughs> and so uh, we're actually going to have the, bu- the puppy play Tecmo Bowl. We're going to have uh, Puppy Bowl Tecmo Bowl <laughs> on stream. We will actually just get a big touch pad that she just walks around on. Yeah, to play she, Tecmo. she'll have the, uh, is it the action pad? It's the big thing that was used for the track and track field. And field. Yeah. She super, can, she can hop good. around on that. But anyway, nice. that is really all the games I played, except for I went on vacation. And of course, on vacation, I was playing games. And the only game you play when you're walking around on vacation, Pokemon Go. Yeah. So really? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back into Pokemon Go. Yep. It's got me again. Okay. So, uh, so lay this on us. Um, how did it change? Okay. And so, because yeah. I was heavy into it, uh, you know, when it first came out. So Same. there's still not a crazy deep battle system, but there is now an idea of some Pokemon are stronger than others, and not by training, but by what you catch. There's an evaluation, and you can actually get some that are substantially stronger than others that you catch. So mm-hmm. now the idea is, before you evolve up, you're trying to catch the best thing you can before you waste the candies to evolve. Okay. So question then, question that comes right off of that, uh, does it matter? Because yes. when I played it, like nothing mattered. Like we, I used to, I played it and I go for walks at lunch every day and take, uh, and take all the gyms in our area for work and all that stuff. Like we used to do this all the time. And then we realized like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. There's no end game. There's no point. So it doesn't matter in the same way that no game in the end really matters. So if you're looking okay, for like, deep. no, 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 no. I'm just saying like, <laughs> There gets to be a point where you can dissect it to the point where, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's no, you win. There, well, I mean, that's fine. There needs to be a winner. But, um, so the battling, now you get some that are just definitely stronger. You know they're stronger. You can adjust the moves a little bit. There's more variety in the moves. You can adjust, like there's TMs you get for doing raids. Hmm. Um, I'll get into those in a sec, because I think some of you may have bounced before raids yeah. were a thing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so gyms absolutely. have been reworked. Uh, automatically you could put six on a gym and you fight your way through it to take the gym so that it's changed but it's still similar you get the currency for sitting on gyms so if you defeat enough gyms you don't have to spend any money in the game and you get in-game currency the same shit you spend money on if you hold a gym for a day you get 50 cents worth that's what it comes down to you can hold multiple gyms at the same time blah 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 whatever raids Raids are where you get your super rares, your legendary birds, your legendary dogs, all this kind of stuff. Um, you end up teaming up with a lot of different people, different yellow, red, blue, everyone. You'll fight these. And there's different tiers. You get like a one-star tier. Anyone can do it by themselves probably. Two, if you're really high level, you could. Normally you want two people. 
but you get up to five star where they recommend you're going at this with 20 different people. Wow. And these are the ones that will spawn out like your legendary birds from the second gen. Um, when you so do these it, are, th this isn't not ver this isn't PVP. This is PVE. Yes. These raid. There okay. is still no PVP outside of gyms. Hmm. Right. And that's just, you're setting your guys on there and you're just leaving them there. You're not actually fighting there. There's no actual PVP element. It's still PVE, but it's just your dudes there. Right. Yes. It, the, okay. the closest because, you get to PVP is the gyms, but now with our our end game at that point was we took the biggest baddest gym in our area during like the 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 peak of this of this craze, right? We took the biggest baddest gym and we filled it with Magikarp, filled the entire gym with Magikarp, and left nice. it. Nice. <laughs> now the thing is to try to fill a gym with like shinies and stuff because there are shinies in the game. All right. But yeah, so I've been doing a decent amount of that. It's a nice phone mobile game. It still drains the battery because it feels like it's unoptimized. But it's really just because yeah. they're trying to jam so much information into it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they they do little like daily quests and stuff to keep you engaged too, which is really nice. So they they've done nice stuff. I've missed the Jim. I see Jimmy John Jim. What the fuck is going on in chat right now, everyone? <laughs> D-Lab said take over a gym, but he's filling it J-I-M. And now we're talking about filling various gyms with shinies, whatever that means. And then we discussed our favorite gyms. Uh, we've got Jim Carrey, Earthworm Jim, Jimmy John's, uh, Jim Halpert. What about Jim, Jim Johnson? I, I said... Jim Beam, yeah. I said Jim Jones because I like Kool-Aid. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Slim Jim's a good one because of Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh, Jim yeah. Beam's a good one. Ooh, yeah. All right, we've actually got some gaming news. Uh, the first uh, of which mm. is Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee announced for the Nintendo Switch. I think it looks interesting. Yeah, it's the mainline, it's mainline Pokemon. They're switching the formula up. Yeah. Um, there will be integration with Pokemon Go. This looks like this might be a way to start integrating trading and potentially getting a PVP system into Pokemon Go, potentially. Hopefully. I, I actually did, am did really Nintendo looking forward to this ever take, Did Nintendo ever take over Pokemon Go? I don't know. Well, they, but... they don't own the Pokemon Company. They are a, I believe, 33% stakeholder in the Pokemon Company. Nor do they own the c company that actually made it. Yeah, they do not own Niantic. And neither Thank does you. Google anymore. Uh, Niantic is their own company. So, hmm. so yeah. it's kind of a partnership with, between three companies, though. It's like not, four. Cause are those are all Game of those 3? companies involved in? Uh, well, are all of those companies involved in Pokemon Go now? The Pokemon Company, Nintendo, Game uh, and Freak Niantic is not. for sure. Yeah, I don't believe Game Freak does anything except the actual games. Yeah, they're mainline. Yeah, but uh, Game Freak and uh, the Pokemon Company are essentially second party teams. It's like the Heavy Rain team to Sony. They don't do anything else. Yeah. But yeah, it, it looks interesting. They're switching the formula up. I am definitely, well, I'm probably going to pick this up. I it's, will. There's no doubt. I will have it. I will have a second switch for Gina and I both to have this. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to do the same thing. It, it looks good. It looks really good. And I, I got to say, I love Eevee. I really do. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. I'm... Debating now, it's it's the thing that Pokemon always does to me. Which one do I get? Clearly, blue is better than red, but red is the better game. Well, well, red mm. is the color of Charizard. Yeah, that's why it got red. That's because Charizard's a better Charmander's the best starter. Yeah, clearly, hands down. But yeah, we'll we'll have to see. Um, there is going to be an actual like a different mainline Pokemon game coming to the Switch in 2019, but we have no details on that. We can expect to see <laughs> in about 10 days uh, Nintendo talking more about this new Pokemon game for the Switch. So we'll that see. that 10 days he's referring to is of course E3. E3. Yeah. E3. E3. So uh, we actually have a. I don't want to call it a leak. It's a, it's definitely announced. Uh, Fallout 76, which is supposed to be an online multiplayer-ish Fallout game by Bethesda. Yeah, it's supposed to be different than anything done in Fallout, which they've only done two things really in Fallout. 
they have the modern era and they have the older RPG era. Yeah. Well, no, they've done three. They did mm-hmm. uh, Sim Tower, the mobile game, which is Fallout Shelter, which actually oh, was Shelter. pretty I keep good. I keep forgetting about Shelter. Shelter was actually pretty fun. If you're looking for a mobile game that you can throw away after you're, it starts begging you for money, Fallout Shelter will you know give you a couple days worth of entertainment. But um, I've never played a Fallout game. Um, I'm not against them. I actually picked up New Vegas, but then decided to turn it back in to get Red Dead. I do not regret that decision. That was, oh, a good decision. That was probably although, a good call. Yeah. Although New Vegas yeah. is I've fucking heard, great. Really? I've heard yeah. the opposite. I heard that of the uh, compared to three, it was very. You've got them flipped. Three, no. three was very, very straightforward. It was very, you will play it in this mm-hmm. way. And New Vegas had a breadth yeah. of options for how you tackled things. It was more Fallout. Right. Yeah, I could, I could see that. I didn't play all the way through New Vegas, but I did play all the way through three. I like three. I like New Vegas. I think they're they're both they're both good, good games. It's like Elder Scrolls, Detroit. Yeah. Elder Scrolls Detroit. I like <laughs> it. Um. Yeah. Other than that, um, there's some other really interesting news. I'll get this one out because it's a little more than a headline. Um, Boss Key Games shuts down. Adam is the one who broke the news to us. Uh, the makers of Lawbreakers, which was supposed to be big and flopped, and Radical Heights, which was their adaptation of a battle royale. And I, we've talked about that in the past. We know that we have mixed reviews on that on this cast. Either way, it's sad not to see it get finished to see what could have happened. It, it always sucks yeah. when a dev studio shuts down. Uh, it, it sucks that people poured their their lives into Lawbreakers and Radical Heights only to have it fall apart. And, you know, now these mm-hmm. people are, are without jobs and need to go find other ones. It, the, the whole situation just sucks. It sucks when the studio hasn't done anything malice, like out of malice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah that's that's probably sure. a better way to put it. They, while, yeah, Lawbreakers didn't release to, to good reviews. It absolutely died on the vine. Uh, Radical Heights was definitely a cash grab that they literally put out to try to save the company and it just didn't catch on or was too little too late, really. But um, what I'm mm-hmm. getting at, like, there's a difference They even said make- that in their press release that Radical Heights was kind of their last, last ditch effort to make something that actually did well. Yeah. I think we're like, on a- I, think it, I think it had a lot of potential. Yeah. I thought it that they did great. some they did some fun switch or some fun changes to the formula, which was interesting. Yeah, but mm-hmm. they're dead. Um, the next and headline, soon Tom, to be dead. No, soon to be dead. <laughs> Sony fucking said it. Sony said no, it's, it's the said, beginning of the end. It's for the, PS4. the end life cycle, which means it's good for another four fucking years. Sony said, "Do not expect a new console before 2020." Yeah, don't expect a new console for at least two years. It's probably going to be another four. So, yeah, Sony says uh, the company has plans to crouch down until March 2021, uh, which we might see a new offering. Uh, he, they've basically come out and said that, look, uh, the PS4, it's, it's at the last part of its cycle. And that, honestly, this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone because these consoles have been out for a little bit. I, I thought, and we were wrong, I thought that the PS4 Pro would try to artificially push this lifetime out a little bit more. Apparently, it didn't. Yeah, I think the uh, the Pro was more of a call out to the fact that, hey, there has been a huge technological breakthrough during this generation that we'd be amiss to not to try to take advantage of. That being 4K became mainline. Yeah, 4K became mainline and the... You know, they they wanted to jump on the VR bandwagon just in case it took off this time. Yeah, for mm-hmm. Sony, yes, but I mean Microsoft, they're not even intending on using HoloLens or anything with it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So we'll we'll have to see. I'm, I'm sure we'll see a PS5 sometime before 2022. Uh, but God, that saying that year makes me feel fucking old. Um, but anyway. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. It doesn't and, mean throw away your PS4s right now. It just means that, yeah, you're reaching the end of your console's life cycle. Which means probably another three to four years. Yeah. Which is still a decent amount. But it's fine. Way, yeah, I was going to say, that's not too bad. Um, not breaking news. <clears throat> no one should be surprised. 343 is working on Halo 6. Yeah, I can also, see. I wonder why. <laughs> in, in other news, grass is green, the sky is blue, and Seattle tends to be rainy in the winter. There is one cool call out through all of that, though, is that there is another company making a Halo arcade game. Yeah. 
Hmm. So think of like maybe something like Time Crisis, but Halo themed. That could be kind of cool. Time I... Crisis? Wait, Time Crisis? Is that really? Really? Oh, no, you no, mean no, like no, no, actually no, no, no. arcade, like an actual arcade yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, a yeah, legitimate yeah. arcade oh, game. Yeah. Sorry, like when uh, those are so, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah the, the antiquated thing. thing that's still trying to live and like Namco and them are still trying to do it. Yeah, those. That would be awesome. Oh, speaking of, I do want to do a segue real quick. We went to Dave and Buster's. Oh, yeah, we did. We played oh. Mario <laughs> you can't Kart. Say it. <laughs> That's awesome. We the best segues. The best segues. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. We're going to segue right now. Let me segue really quick. <laughs> hey, hold my beer while I segue. Um, <laughs> hold my beer. We played, we played Mario Kart. Uh, was it AX? Basically, it was, it was the fucking Double Dash engine. Um, it's the one that's been around yeah. forever. Um, I think it's AX. Either way, it's Mario Kart at the arcade, and it was really fun. GP? Yeah, yeah Mario I saw Kart the, arcade they have GP. a bunch of them over by us, too. Yeah, like you double tap the gas to jump so you can still get the drift mechanic down. It was really fucking it's, fun. It's a lot of fun. And by the way, uh, fuck you, Urk, because I was in first place the whole goddamn race, and you red-shelled me right before the finish line. Sorry, bro. That's what the shells do. God fucking damn it. Um, you know, then, I never thought there was like a skill gap in Mario Kart until I played a friend recently who'd never played before. <laughs> and yeah. well, I brought in the Switch uh, for lunch and like I was like, let's play, you know, we're going to play Mario Kart because we had a really slow day planned as no one was in. And so we ended up pulling this big TV out from one of the conference rooms and then hooking up the Switch and playing all day with nice. like pizza and stuff is great. Um, but he quit playing Mario Kart like instantly <laughs> he's Aww. like he's like yep guess we're done with this I'm like all right you want to try Rocket League <laughs> yeah even with the catch-up <laughs> mechanics sometimes new players just still know <laughs> yeah it was rough and also Tom and I ended up getting the second place high score in the Star Wars battle pods which was really that's pretty fun. cool that sounds fun those those are fun uh we we did play the Ghostbusters arcade game which was cheap yeah, it, it wasn't very good. <laughs> I like how it started with excitement. Like, yeah, we uh, also played. Well, because he remembered yeah. the highlight. Oh, we played Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. And then I had to remind him it wasn't that good. Yeah, no, it, it just wasn't. Yeah, um, what else did we play that was really fun? Oh, uh, they had. Um, they had Laura Croft. There was like this huge the, the Tomb like, Raider a, shooter game. 120 inch screen light yeah. gun Laura Croft what? four player game. It was yeah, four Damn. players. You actually reload the gun by pulling back. Like it was it was interesting. I, I don't think it was great. Nothing at Dave and Buster's is ever like amazing, like holy shit, I have to play this all the time. But well, except for the good. battle that's pod. Why they have yeah, except for the battle pod. Why they have a bar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's absolutely why they have a bar. <laughs> as uh, Bivin said, I have had a few nights in Dave and Buster's drunk as hell playing Daytona USA, which I was yes. disappointed they didn't have Daytona USA. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? That's it's the nice. first one I've ever been to without that. Which Did they have sad. any good driving games? Uh, Mario Kart, and they had. They had some other ones, but like they didn't have Hydro Thunder and they didn't have. Yeah. The, oh, what? They it had a new. They had a, they had a reboot of um, Daytona, but yeah, yeah, they didn't have Hydro or H2 Overdrive, either of them. Yeah, totally Man. missing. They did have that skiing game, though, which is always a good time. Oh, yeah. yeah. There used to be a skateboarding oh, game yeah. that I used to love for uh, that was an arcade game. Oh, I yeah. What it was. The kid with the backpack or whatever. I don't know. It was really good. That was so fun. And there's one other game Tom and I played that was originally something I played on the Wii, and somehow they made an arcade cabinet oh, out of it. Oh, shit! I forgot about this. This was definitely the highlight. Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Uh, and no. they Okay, they've got a floor mat, and there's actually uh, infrared um, like sensors and, and receivers. Um, so mm -hmm. what, what they did uh, is they can detect where your feet are on this mat, so you have to actually run on this mat which also has uh, pressure sensitive triggers in it you have to run on the mat and actually jump to do long jumps and what pissed oh, me that's off amazing. is tom was kicking my ass and then i realized what it was i'm used to the old mats that are pressure sensitive yeah so this you keep your feet super low i are you would keep your feet super low and just go super fast yeah. But since this uses an actual laser to detect that you're lifting it so high i wasn't registering any fucking steps yeah so uh, I, I did end up winning that, but yeah, it was uh, it was cool. Dan Buster's good time. Yeah. Um, Resident yeah. Evil Seven coming to the Switch in Japan. Yeah. 
So this is interesting. interesting. Um, rage two. Fuck rage. Or, I'm sorry. Are you getting okay. ragey? Yeah. Was it that bad? Yes. I always thought it looked cool, but I never did uh, play it. Was, it. it was bad. Really? Um, looks like people are finding that Destiny Two has an ARG. Uh, yeah. So they they did do the ARG, and they they got some like IRL treasure, which is kind of cool. Oh, I like so, when companies do ARGs. I hate when people decompile code to solve ARGs. Unless yeah, that's part do, of it. Just yeah. do the thing. Do the thing. Yeah, like um, ruin it for everybody. Um, Binding of Isaac had one of the, or a couple of, or had one that got decompiled and it got pissed. So then they did one in complete real life to fuck with people. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, nothing will ever be as good as the ARG for Frog Fractions Two. Oh, where they actually pushed it into um, what game was it? It was some fairy game they pushed frogs fractions to information into another game yeah. and it was pushed as an update yeah so you had to read <laughs> through the update to figure it out it was fucking oh wow weird. super deep um steam link or android not ios yeah so uh valve hmm. pushed out steam link as an app which actually is kind of cool and it works kind of well yeah um so you can use a controller in your phone and play play you know steam streaming games on on your phone uh what you can't do is do that on iphone anymore uh because apple said holy shit steam on our phone fuck off and uh and it's been pulled so crazy thanks, apple yep uh ea has announced that they are pushing forward with loot boxes despite regulation because it's ea and nobody's surprised <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, Virtual Console not coming to the Switch. Was that actually confirmed that it's not coming? Yeah. Or is that... Yeah, Nintendo themselves said we're not doing Virtual Console on the Switch. We'll do something entirely Why? different. Are they They're doing a different thing or yeah, same thing? Yeah, it's... No one really knows, but they said it's, it's going to be something different tied into their online system. Uh, which, by the way, you will be able to do cloud saves with Nintendo Online. You have to have a paid account. Which is cheap. It is cheap. It's twenty bucks a year, but but still, everyone else offers these for free. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, what? Steam what offers them about? for free. Gog offers them for free, and that's fucking Gog. Yeah, but consoles don't. Oh, it's a good thing I don't own one of those. Wait, shit. Yep. Um, but no, it upsets me because there's a game I've been wanting to really play. And I'm like, man, I have a ROM. I don't want to play the ROM. I want to play the actual thing. And I was waiting because they, they right when the switch came out, they released it on the VC for the V or Wii U. And I'm like, sweet. Once the VC comes to the switch, I'll be playing me some Ogre Battle 64. Fuck you, Nintendo. Cause there's yep. no way in hell that's ever getting a re-release for the switch well and it's so goddamn yeah. arbitrary what they release and what they don't i, I realize that look they, at the neo geo titles who the fuck cares about three-fourths of those yeah i i get that you know they're not going to take all of konami's castlevania games and re-release them on their own right yeah i get it it's that would be they'd be infringing so many copyrights at that point and get themselves into legal hot water but for fuck's sake you don't have to release one game at a time just take the the library of nes games that you've published Sell them for 99 cents a piece. Like, if I want to buy again. Dr. Mario... Yeah, again. If I want to buy Dr. Mario, <laughs> Metroid, Zelda, and Mario 3, I should be able to pay you four fucking dollars and buy the things that I already have sitting on my shelf at home. Again. Again. I mean, because let's restress that. <laughs> Through the Wii, to the Wii U, to the uh, the 3DS, I, and I now had, back to the I Switch. I had two Wiis. I bought virtual console games on both of them because I'm a fucking retard. Nintendo is making money selling games to people 10 times. I have bought One Ocarina, fucking game. I have bought Ocarina because time people at keep least buying eight them. times. Yes. I can't be upset at them too much because fuckers like Tom exist and do it. Yes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm clearly a sick, sick man because of these video games. The NRA mm -hmm. is now blaming video games for sick kids. So... That's a thing. That's a headline. Uh, like Thanos sick would... kids, like, <coughs> or sick kids. I like imagine it's probably just like sick. I like any. I like wow. any software yeah. that has an extreme version. I feel like it would show up with rollerblades. 
Now with like mode? Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> well, like there's a whole bunch of software I've been deploying that have like an extreme version, and I'm like, I'm like, this should come with rollerblades. It should like, come with, <laughs> it should come with bleach, like a, a bottle of bleach and rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> Get those tips, frosty boys. <laughs> Whoever Stay uses frosty. extreme and anything. Extreme. <laughs> extreme. Uh, you know what was weed, pretty extreme? For pussies. I do crack because I'm extreme. What was pretty extreme is that uh, Thanos got added to Fortnite for a little bit, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, that was I, fun. Yeah, he seemed neat. OP as hell. Did he ever lose a match? Uh, yeah, yeah, several times. Oh. Yeah, it was actually pretty fun. I think Bird killed him once. Did they do statistics on that? I don't know. Not that That'd they be really interesting to see. They, it's, it's, not, it's not crazy hard to kill him because then the glove falls and you just get to beat him they wanted oh, people to kill him okay, you, know, oh, you never even looked at it did you no i saw videos and stuff i thought you were thanos for the round no 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 oh. basically the glove, glove drops. drops you grab the and then glove. you have you are thanos yeah. you have like okay. 600 health or something the first time and then you had 300 when they would they they made the health less because they wanted everyone to be able to play yeah, yeah. i'm dumb so yeah Mm. Yeah, no, no. It's just an item that you get, and then it just turns you into Thanos for a while. It's really I, cool. I love the whole story behind it. Are, are we covering this right now, or <laughs> does it? I don't know I, if you no, guys covered we, it last we time. To- we did not cover it last time. We totally. Yeah. Oh, it was really cool. Like I, I know I don't know if we have any articles on it or anything, but it was really interesting that uh, when um, they approached them, they kind of like were both really big fans. The the director for um, that movie and the uh, one of the like a producer or uh, the writer I don't know I remember, I don't remember the article exactly but they were both really big fans of each other's work with Fortnite and with the Marvel movies and they geeked out on each other's work for a while and I guess it was a really good collaboration that they had and uh, it was a really it was a really kind of like weird heartwarming story between like developer and uh, and movie maker I don't know that's I think that's, that's kinda, I think that's really cool that's kind of rad. I, I love I it think when I, like these the people that create like these big universes and and big products are just like, yeah, we're we're kind of you know star crushing over here on these guys who built this thing that we really love. Yeah, like I think that's really cool. I think it's really cool when you can like respect someone else's hard work. Granted, it's not in the mm-hmm. same medium, but like it's just it's just no, really cool. It's that's really cool because you would normally think like, oh, Marvel, Disney, way up there. Why the fuck would they do it? And more so, it's like, hey, guys, we're in Fortnite now. We're in fucking Fortnite. <laughs> We've made yeah. it, guys. We got to Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I got to say, I am disgusted with how big Fortnite's gotten. Not necessarily a bad way, but it's gross. I was on vacation <laughs> and they were playing Fortnite in this little fucking hut. Yeah. Instead of, you know, you're in <laughs> tropical paradise and they go to play fucking Fortnite. <laughs> Dude, it's it's gotten fucking huge. They're they're making money and and frankly, Epic deserves this. They they took something, they they built it, they built a fun game, they made it free mm-hmm. and I freeze the big thing. Yeah, I honestly freeze, think Yeah, that's yeah. very key. I honestly think that Fortnite everything Fortnite has, they've earned. But someone who absolutely disagrees is the PUBG Corporation who is now suing Epic Games over Fortnite because they're whiny crybabies. I love the memes that have come from this. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! That is, they, 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 it was just, oh, it's so good. Anyway, he carry so, on. <laughs> the the PUBG Corporation is is suing for various infringements. Um, you see, they're they're suing specifically for copyright infringement. I'm looking for a quote here. Uh, Fortnite may be replicating the experience for PUBG is known. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Trying to find a really good. This is why they're suing. Can I throw in a fun caveat here? Yeah. There's, um, you all heard of Tencent, you know, they're kind of trying to take over the world even more than Amazon is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. They have ownership shares in both companies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Um, but anyway, here's, here's a, a cool fact. This already fucking happened. 
We have already done this in the early 80s. Way, way back in the day, there was a giant game made by a company that took the world by fucking storm. They were making money hand over fist. We're talking fucking songs about it. Like, yeah, sure, you got one one shitty rapper playing your game. Who the fuck cares? Have you ever heard of Pac-Man Fever? That was the shit, man. You had TV shows, lunchboxes. Pac-Man was the shit in the early 80s. And so were the copycats. You had games like... Lock and Chase, uh, Mighty Mouth, um, KC Munchkin, uh, Hungry Horus, Snack Attack, Snapper, and the list goes on. Everyone was trying to get a piece of the Pac-Man pie, and uh, people were suing the fuck out of each other because they said, ah, you're just a Pac-Man clone, you can't do that. And the only cases that held up in the court of law was when somebody built a character that looked like Pac-Man. If your <laughs> game was sufficiently different... You you <laughs> didn't get sued. I mean, people tried to sue you, but you won the case because it turns out in in the case law that has uh, as you know emanated from these cases back in the eighties is basically yeah if you copy somebody's look of a game if you are clearly trying to imitate them like the PUBG clones in China on mobile phones uh, then yeah you will be sued you will lose the case and you will get shut down. But if all you're copying is game mechanics, you can't fucking protect those. You can't copyright them. You can get a patent for game mechanics, but they are extremely difficult to get. And as far as we know, because patents are public, the PUBG Corp does not have a patent on Battle Royale games. As a matter of fact, I don't think they could get one because prior work suggests that, look, being the last person in an arena has been a thing in first-person shooters since Doom. Or the fact that it's, you know, the name itself is shared from the inspiration of Battle Royale. Yeah, exactly. There's mm -hmm. there's no fucking way that the PUBG but, course will win this, and they need to just get over themselves. Guess what, guys? PUBG is great. It's a fantastic game. It's a lot of fun, and it had a lot of success. You got bested. Um, I still don't want to say they the got one bested. They still feel a little different, but there is a funny thing in this. They're also suing because the same in-game items, you know, like an M16 is in both games. <laughs> an M4 oh. is in both games. Oh, no, a real gun is in both games. Yeah, sue Counter-Strike while you're at it. As and, a matter of fact, and, sue Unreal Tournament because last man standing mode? Yeah, I played a lot of that. Sue Clancy in Ubisoft. Yeah, see how that too. goes, too. Get the Canadian well, Minecraft. When are, when are we going to get to Minecraft? Because that Minecraft was my favorite. Sue Minecraft <laughs> Yes, sue, like sue Microsoft. Game. They they've been through court a, yeah. a few times. They've they've got a couple lawyers on staff. But <laughs> I, there's there's no way they win this. The scariest thing to me is you know you're upset if you were to say that there was a contract that they broke by doing this. I'm supporting you, mm -hmm. but by trying mm -hmm. to sue off a copycat, I get where they're coming from. But that is scary as someone who plays games. That if anything like this was to ever actually somehow win what it would do to the industry. Oh, it would destroy the industry. Yeah. Saints Row wouldn't exist because Rockstar could theoretically sue them for copying yeah. Grand Theft Auto. Saints Row yeah. would then have and, to pull out the Saints satire. Row is, has way more in common with Grand Theft Auto than uh, Fortnite has in common with PUBG anyway. Saints Row was like built as a, so as a satire on Grand Theft Auto. It's almost like yeah. it's a reskin of GTA with a slightly goofier ragdolls. Yeah. And in not that's not to denigrate Saints Row. We no, fucking, I love it. Yeah, we fucking love Saints Row. Yeah, Saints Row is awesome. There, there is a reason that games will copy each other, and some of them do it better than others, right? We, how many mm -hmm. fucking crafting survival voxel games came out after after Minecraft launched? And I don't holy think, shit, and they're still coming. <laughs> I don't. Think, what do you mean? <laughs> they're still coming. I don't think the existence of Trove uh, denigrates Minecraft or, or takes away from Minecraft in any way. Mm -hmm. No, and that's why Microsoft is not totally in the thing. Yeah, and because they know they can't. So fuck you, PUBG Corp. Go fuck yourselves. I'll still play your game. Yeah, I'll still play your game. But go fuck <laughs> yeah, yourselves. Yeah, don't don't get me wrong. We'll yeah. still play it, but I don't like you're an asshole. Yeah, cool but you make cool a good it game. A little bit. <laughs> I'm not social justicey enough to actually not play a game that's good because I don't I like the company. Honestly, don't play PUBG yeah. because I would rather play Fortnite. I'd rather play PUBG because I like the anxiety of it. I like the angst of... I totally get it. Oh, uh, we're going back into the red. Let's yeah, just... No, 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 I totally get it. We've built yeah. a freeway that goes past this whole conversation. 
because we've done it so many times that we've actually installed a bypass. We can take that instead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can do we that. do that next time <laughs> Dark Souls comes up? No, 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 no. Dark Souls <laughs> no, no, bypass no, no, has that... been shut down. Yeah, that we shut that down a long time ago. Yeah. We built the bypasses. It's, it's under construction. The bypass still. of Dark Souls goes right into Blight Town, and nobody leaves Blight Town. Yeah. <laughs> I won't go there. Anyway. Um, anyway, um, we'd like to, um, you know, ask at this point: Has anyone got anything else to add to the show? Do we? Do we? Do we have anything? Nope. Any other talking um, points? I'd like to throw out a plug for someone who is absolutely not affiliated with us in any way, but I think he's a cool guy. Gaming historian on YouTube. Uh, Gaming historian. Actually, if you're interested in Pac-Man copycats or old history of video games, companies, that sort of thing, uh, his YouTube channel is fan fucking tastic. So go look him up. He does an amazing amount of research. Uh, and puts love and care into each of his videos. So, highly recommended. Gaming Historian, YouTube. Go look him up. Hmm. Okay. Cool. And with that, yeah, I think that's, that's all we got. So, with oh, that, uh, let's go ahead and do the rundown. So, for everyone that's still out here watching, thank you. Uh, quick shout out, we won't be having a post game for ourselves. We'll probably be hosting out, but um, no post game. Uh, puppy business IRL makes it hard. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> still playing games. Yes, come to games, Discord, man. chill, enjoy. But other than that, you should definitely check out our content we have on YouTube. We're throwing stuff up. We're slowly catching up. I think we're only three down now. So we'll get that figured out, finished up. That's on my bad. Sorry, guys. Um, Tweet at us what you think. Any news you find. We're only at a month at a time now. Uh, we try to catch the news, but some will slip through. So tweet at us when you find something cool and interesting you'd like us to talk about. We'll probably talk about it because we're lazy and don't always find all the news. Um, if you are over at YouTube or listening to us on any of the awesome podcasting apps, uh, we will be doing this show live every Saturday night, first of the month Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. And, um, yeah, guys. Yeah. I think that's all we got. Woo! Woo! Yeah, um, so we'll be, uh, this, just real quick, um, we're going to be hosting a uh, real-life friend. They do a lot of um, Magic the Gathering stuff, if you're ever interested in that sort of thing. Um, these are definitely the guys to do it. They do a bunch of uh, tournaments, a bunch of really, it's really interesting. If you ever wanted to get into it, they do a great job. Uh, coaching people that don't know uh, how to play it. So that's probably the person we're going to host. All right. And with that, until next week, game on. Keep playing Dark Souls. Goodbye. <laughs> next month. <laughs>